Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dave. This is Joshua. What's going on? This is Brandon. And this is Lyndon Puoco from Leprechaun Returns. And you are now tuned in to PVD Horror. I so, love it when people say PVD Horror. You love it when people say PVD Horror? Yeah, I don't know why. It's just like the coolest thing when people come on and they're like, we're now tuned in to PVD Horror. I think it's the coolest thing. A, a very yeah. strange but specific fetish, Josh. <laughs> you see, hey. see how see how I'm treated, Lyndon. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is how it's gonna go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there'll be a lot of this. Feel free I to do. join in. It all around. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, that's what uh, uh, that's what it's meant to be. Have a good time. Hundred yeah. percent. Exactly. So, oh, hey, everybody. We're joined here today with Lyndon Por uh, Lyndon Porco, uh, known to the horror world for his role as Leprechaun in the 2018 film Leprechaun Returns. Lyndon, thank you for joining us today, man. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Of course. Yeah, man. Uh, so I, I want to start it off. I specifically asked for the first question. I was like, guys, step aside. I'm going first. <laughs> that never happened. He never, he never <laughs> said that. <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, seriously, I, I heard uh, Vern Troyer got you like started in like, really hardcore acting. And um, I, I just wanted to ask you, can you can you tell us what that was like? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, uh, I mean, it, it all kind of started at uh, my parents saw that he was coming to uh, Winnipeg, um, Manitoba uh, in Canada, which is where I'm originally from. And he was doing a show at the World of Wheels. I don't know if you guys know about that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's like a car show. And, okay. and so they just have a whole bunch of these cars. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, you know, Vern Troyer, he has the same um, uh, dwarfism as myself. So my parents thought it'd be a good idea for you know, me to go there and chat with him and, and you know, see kind of what life was like as a little person um, in, in his eyes. And he kind of, you know, one thing led to another, had, you know, lunch with him that day. He had me backstage with him. He had me up on the table while he was signing autographs for people, that kind of thing. So it kind of, one thing just led to another and it just st started to just kind of roll. And he then asked at like near the end of the day, like what I kind of wanted to do. And he said, and I said, um, you know, you know, acting's kind of been something I was interested in, didn't necessarily know how to, to go about it. But um, he then said, okay, let me get you in touch with my manager. And one thing led to another. And I think like a month went by and I got a message saying, hey, you know, can you send a tape of you being physically active? Well, you know, these producers want to check you out. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sounds good. You know, just do me kind of thing. And nine years old or eight years old at the time. And months later, got a call saying, hey, they loved you. They want to fly you down to L.A., do a screen test. I said, what? Screen test? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. What the heck? You know, that kind of thing. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. This is a ride. I'll go. I mean, I'm nine years old at the time. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I was aware of my surroundings, but I wasn't necessarily, I didn't realize the capacity of, like, what is actually happening at the time. Sure. Yeah. So, that it was a really cool experience and you know working with them was i mean it was it was unbelievable for the first time you know working on a yeah. set and the set that they they had and they and they did and they built and i mean it was it was incredible so i mean that's how i kind of got started in the industry and what really um what, what really made me fall in love with it awesome that's cool all right so I started this playlist, which features some of our guests' favorite songs. Could you share two songs that made an impact on your life so we can add to the list? Yes, absolutely. Um, so one of the songs that I actually uh, listened to, if it, well, I can't remember the exact date that this came out, but it's Every Day by Logic and Marshmallow. Okay. And so I would listen to this, and I still listen to this, um, on my way to auditions, on my way back from auditions, um, and it's kind of just like a pump up song, 
as yeah. well. Oh, as, like, I know what song you're talking about. He's like, I work oh, hard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is a good pump up song. You're right. So uh, I, I listen to that. Um, that that that's definitely like my one that I really folk. That's basically my one song that I just comes to mind yeah. as soon as you ask that question. And then the other one that I have is Company by 24K Gold and Future. Okay. It's something that I just love vibing to. I just love yeah. So. Yeah, my kids love that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, it's I don't know. I, I heard it for the first time and I was like, okay, it's catchy. It's got yeah. a vibe, and I'm just gonna. I just rolled with it and. I loved it and I still yeah. continue to listen to it. So wow, that's right. awesome. Thanks, man. I'm pretty sure like all listeners would like to check out the uh because we got a playlist, we're gonna have it on Spotify. So we have a lot of actors and everybody that were on the show. So they've been adding songs. So it sounds good so far. I was able to put it all together and I'm like, oh man, this is like a good mix. So I can't wait to add your two songs to it. It's gonna sound great. Heck yeah. I actually I wanna so you you can follow it, like I can follow it too and i can check it out yeah it's gonna be on uh, spotify and i also have it on youtube sweet yeah definitely i'll check it out whenever you know yeah, you send me send it over and I'll, I'll check that out sweet awesome. All right. awesome. that was pretty cool i think our fans really want to hear you sing again that was unexpected <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. um <laughs> pvd horror the the, the the album that's what we're, we're looking for <laughs> I do, I do, uh, I do some music on the side too with, uh, with All right. some buddies. So really, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's pretty badass. What kind of music do you do? You rap? Yeah, I rap, rap. All right. awesome. nice. Yeah, just something. Uh, check it out. You have to send me some songs, man. Hey, it's on, uh, it's on Spotify. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh wow. Uh, we we we'll probably be posting them for you. That's for sure. That's that's <laughs> all. Yeah. Um. So I heard you were a wrestling fan. I read that somewhere. Is that true that you're a wrestling fan? I, so I was when I was a kid. I was a big wrestling uh -huh. fan. I would sit sit down with my with my pops and we'd watch uh, you know SmackDown, WWE, that kind of thing. We actually went to one that was being held in Winnipeg at one point. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but we saw. I you know we wanted to go, and I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. And kind of, but now I don't necessarily watch it right now. Um, but my favorite uh, wrestler back in the day was Rey Mysterio. I think it had something to do with um, his height being, uh, you know, being short and in, in the WWE. Um, and then, I mean, the 619 was just so sick to see every time he did it that, you know, I love, love watching him. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm an old school wrestling fan. And I remember when Mysterio started in Mexico. Uh, I saw a bunch of his stuff way back. Yeah. So, you know, it was, he, he was revolutionary for his time when he came mm -hmm. to the United States, especially. So totally yeah. down with that opinion. Yeah, it's I, awesome I, now. I he, uh, yeah, his son's actually on and on the roster now. So they were actually like no the way. first, yeah, first father and son to become the tag team champions. What? That yeah. is unbelievable. <laughs> that is too sick. Yeah. His son's huge too. Like his son's a big kid. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah, yeah really? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't Josh get the full teams. I get it. It's okay, you know. <laughs> Josh is uh is very old school wrestler, uh wrestling fan though. He, he was around when uh wrestling was invented. It was cool, right, Josh? You were <laughs> you were fifty when funny. it was invented. Totally not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Our running like joke about Josh is that he's been fifty for like since we've known him, which has been years now. Oh, okay. <laughs> he stays the same age forever. Hey, you so, know, it's, it's got to be the beard and the hair. It just keeps it all together. You know what I mean? That's it. That's it. Don't age. I've had this beard since I was 12. So when Dave had and everybody else went to <laughs> Canada. Not, you did I not just say 12. Not <laughs> so uh, that's uh, funny. <laughs> so, <And> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Really, actually. <laughs> serious? You had it since you were 12? Yeah, so uh, sixth grade, I've been the same height since sixth grade, and what? I was shaving in sixth grade. And uh, it's funny, I used to live like around the corner. I live around the corner from where I grew up. Yeah. And the main road uh, down in Westward, I used to walk down the main road and just walk into the bars because I had, you know, the beard. And I would just walk up to the bar, take a drink, put it back and walk out. And then I would go to the next one. And I would do that until I got caught. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm Lyndon. I don't. I don't know if I'm buying the story. I don't know. 
yeah. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Well, hey, this uh, seems this seems unreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most no, of what Josh says every, seems unreal. Let's just put it that way. Well, just call him out, Landon. Man. Whenever you, Landon, whenever you have bullshit, just call him out on yeah, it. Yeah, just call him <laughs> out. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I choose I choose to to believe people. So okay. I'm, one of, right. I'm one of those. All right. Yeah. But if I really think you bullshitting, then I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Lyndon, you've been in the film industry since you were about like eight or nine years old. I think I read it was like since 1996, right? Uh, that's when I was born. I was. Uh, oh, you were born in 96. So no, not 96. <laughs> not 96. I mean, since came out, was... out of the, yeah, came out of the womb, and I was just in the industry. Was, <laughs> they, were, they were filming they it. Right there. Yeah. So, you know what? It was like what's what's that? The. Uh, they made the oh. educational videos and it was you coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Uh, uh, the one with Jim Carrey, the, the Truman Show. Oh, the Truman Show, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was like that. That's how it, you know, That's how my life is, continues to be, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So I meant to say 2004 yeah, is yeah, how yeah. long you've been in the industry. Um, so you already told us how you got involved, but I was kind of curious because like you hear a lot of stories about child actors and how sometimes the upbringing can be kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so I just was kind of curious what your experience being a child actor has been like. And, you know, did you have any of those struggles that other child actors have had and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, I think it's, I mean, coming, me being a little person in general, it's just tough in, in this industry. Um, because everybody's afraid to, you know, do certain things nowadays. Everybody doesn't want to be wrong and do something that would offend somebody or whatever it is, which, which I completely understand. But at the same time, you know, the audience and, and, you know, as us as creators need to not think about that as being the, the, the forefront of our minds, because I think it's overtaking our creative aspects mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously there's certain things and that you can and can and cannot can say and cannot say. So yeah. like, it's just about being, you know, smart when it comes sure. to, you know, certain things are off limits and certain things are not. Right. Yeah. So, and I think the best thing we can do, especially with, you know, people with disabilities or, you know, whoever is just talk to the person and be like, Hey, is this offline? Or is it, and if they say, yep, yeah, then say, okay, thank you. And then you move on and you create something else. Or even better yet, you get them in on the process so that they can help you be, you know, create, create the, the dialogue to make it, you know, funny or, you know, whatever it is. But I mean, yeah, I think growing up in, in the industry, uh, especially being a little person and then being from, you know, a small town um, in Winnipeg, uh, what was tough because it wasn't necessarily getting the exposure back then. It's getting a lot more exposure now. Um, a lot of more things are, are being filmed there, um, which is great to see. Um, but that's another reason why I moved out to Vancouver is because there's a lot more opportunities. Um, I still think that this industry, um, you know, it's, it's going in the right direction, but it's not where it needs to be yet. Um, so I, I, I will continue to push towards, you know, getting people to be aware of little people in this industry and people with disabilities um, and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I'm currently writing something right now that I've been working on for about five years, um, just trying to uh, get it out there um, and, and get people to, you know, to see it when it comes out. I mean, I'm still writing it. So it's, it's still yeah. in that process of- you made, a, you made a post about it today. I did, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I saw that and it's, it's you and a, a friend working on it, right? Yeah, me and, me and a friend are working on it. I mean, I personally was working on it for about, for about five years. Um, it was like in a, a thought process. Then I started writing stuff down. Then I did a workshop that really helped me get it out. And then through that workshop, I learned that, okay, I need to create more of a story um to it because it was just basically like the ending of a of a play slash movie um and then it now i'm you know super happy with where it is where it's at and now i just need to kind of edit it and you know get some people and colleagues to read it to let me know what they think but yeah i think this industry is you know it's moving in the right direction but it's slow 
and it's really fucking slow when it comes to people with disabilities and i think it needs to you know open up their fucking eyes and yeah realize but what they what they have i mean there's a huge genre of things that are just not being done because they're unaware of people like us so yeah um kind of a just a little sidebar and to kind of highlight that um brandon what's the name of the actor who's playing toxic avenger uh dinklage dinklage peter dinklage Dinklage. Uh, Dinklage, um, Peter Dinklage. Yeah. sorry I, I was having like a, a, a uh, space for a second but like i think it's so cool to see someone like peter dinklage getting put in like mainstream movies right now and not just getting into those same like reoccurring roles that we always see them in like mm-hmm. um he's doing toxic avenger and which is so, like for him to play that role is going to be amazing i can't wait to see what they're going to do with it but i just saw a preview yesterday for a movie that's coming out and he's playing like the lead role and it's and there's like a romantic interest and it's like just something you, i feel like 10 15 years ago you would you would never see that no um, no absolutely i, I, I no. think you're right about it going in the right direction yeah. It's, it's yeah it's going in the right direction um for sure uh you know there's certain things that you know i think could be done to you know help promote people with disabilities further um but hey I, i'm just in the industry and you know, um, I'll take, I'm going to take the back seat on, on certain things because, you know, it, it's just, the, it's just the way this industry works. And I'm, I don't, I'm not personally in that position right now in my career where I can say, no, this, no, that, no, this. Sure. No that. So, yeah. um, but hey, I hope one day I can get there to say, you know, this is what, where we should go with this. Um, but I mean, at the same time, it's just about being open. And I think that, you know, me being a little person and, you know, being, being through all these certain things in my life and in this, in this industry, um, I see it a different way than, you know, some other people see it. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's just about opening our eyes to every possibility of anybody can play any part. And if we, if we literally just do that, we have nothing, there's nothing else holding us back. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's just what it comes down to at the end of the day. It's a valuable point. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of ask you a more personal question, uh, kind of about your experience in the film industry. Um, I'm sure that like we can come up with some obvious issues that might come up as a little person in the industry, whether it's typecasting or limit, like we were talking about limitation on specific roles. Um, Have you had any like personal experiences that were kind of, kind of highlighted the challenges that a low person might face trying to get roles or or is there anything that we were like no I won't do that because that's like just not something I'm willing to do it's it's so I so I feel like yeah I I mean as a little person every little person in this industry has a right to say no to a role um no matter you know what it is and and how they're feeling about it if they're feeling that strongly about it I I I personally won't say no to any role I, I like to give everything like I said you know the benefit of the doubt um when it comes to certain things uh because I know how hard this industry is to even to get roles for little people so um I'm not going to just say no to a role I'm I'll look into it and you know give it like I said the benefit of the doubt when it comes down to the day um but what I think is absolutely ridiculous is um I've that I've seen and that I've noticed throughout the industry through you know these these years is them hiring people like if i i get it like for christmas movies let's say you know and they're hiring an elf like i've auditioned how many elves have i auditioned for like i could couldn't count on one finger like i couldn't count on two hands like so but then they don't hire little people they hire you know people who are just short people and i'm thinking okay but that's not know what I mean? Like, okay, go ahead and hire that for, you know, if you're wanting them for background and, and all that stuff, if that's what you're wanting. But for the lead, that lead elf should be a little person. Because that way it's saying, okay, they are, you know, it, this is an elf. It's a, it's a little person. And then everything else can kind of go around that. But I mean, that's just my personal opinion when it comes to things, because now they're just taking away more opportunities from little people. Yeah which yeah. in my opinion, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, 
I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't personally want to play an elf role to begin with. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Yeah, let's right. be honest, right? Yeah. But now you've just taken away it. Now it's not even given an option to us. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. It's, it's like a, it's a, it's a balance between like, do you do it? Do you not do it? Kind of thing when it comes mm-hmm. down to it. But I mean, yeah, I, I just think it, the industry just needs to open up even more than they're already doing. But I mean, I'm just happy they're on the right track. Sure. Yeah. That's all we can hope for, man, is that everything just gets fixed and everything starts to become positive and then everybody opens up more jobs, you know? Yeah. You know, everybody's still fighting for that in every, you know, in every type of case, you know? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I think so. it, yeah, it's not just. No, no, no. Yeah. No, I'm not taking away from anything that you're saying. I'm just saying oh, it's, it's, it's just the industry just needs to itself just open its eyes everywhere, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Everybody just needs that. I think if everybody had a more of an open mind, it, the world would be a better place. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, like I always say to people, I'm like, you can have your opinion and see things, but, you know, understand where somebody else is coming from. You just can't, like, some people just sit there and put their head down and they just believe in what they believe, but they have to just believe there's two sides to the, to the story, you know? Yep. But yep. on the other hand, let's get into something like, you know, some, so I had some, heard some news. Your first movie was actually like Little Man, right? Yeah. So how was it working with Sean and Marlon Wayans? Like, I mean, that, that was, that was absolutely crazy. Um, you know, they, that, that whole family is, you know, is legendary yeah. um, for what they've done um, and that what they've, you know, created and can continue to create. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I, mean, what, I mean, what do I start when it comes yeah. to, like, go, just going down and the energy I got from just going down and doing that screen test, like I said, um, it just, it started with great energy and, and great people. And they just kind of brought me in and made mm-hmm. me feel at home, which, uh, you know, I think especially my parents appreciated. Yeah. Um, because it was like, okay, like, you know, they can trust this process and what's going on. Um, and so that was really nice. And then one thing like led to another when it came to just, you know, working with Marlon and Sean and, and everybody in the uh, whole cast uh, and, mm-hmm. And it was just such a pleasure because it was just bouncing ideas off of each other and um and whatnot and, and then i remember marlon coming up to me at one point he's like oh well, you know try to try and do this and this and this and then i was like okay okay so you're like this this i mean it, it's a there's special features in little man that you can actually watch on youtube and it's called linden's world so okay. uh i mean and it's about the movie but it's just about like what i was going through and what i did previously going up to that and then when i got back home so um yeah if anybody's interested in that check that out um but uh yeah no they at christmas time the wardrobe people gave me this huge stocking and it was just full of gifts full of gifts and like you know as a kid i mean i personally wasn't expecting it you know what i mean i was just expecting like okay like see you guys when when you get back from christmas thank you for everything that kind of thing um, but, you know, they, they, they went above and beyond and, and was so nice to me. And then they, uh, Marlon always bugged me about uh, playing Madden. And so <laughs> he had, I think it was a, I think it was the PlayStation 2 at that time. And so I went in and I played Madden on the, uh, on the TV in his trailer at one point. And he beat me, of course. I wasn't very good because I didn't play Madden yet. I wasn't playing video games yet at, at nine years old. So um, after that happened, he bought me a, they bought me a PSP. And okay. the first game that they gave me was Madden with it, obviously. And so then he, so at the end of the whole thing, after everything was done, I had a, I have a bunch of, I had a bunch of pictures from uh, the show or the, the movie and one of the sign things that Marlon said was work on your Madden punk. And so that was, <laughs> that's the type of people they are. They're still, as a nine-year-old kid, they're still joking with me. They're still doing this stuff. And I was giving it right back. You know what I mean? So, I mean, they, they truly, they truly treated me like, like I was part of their family and just brought me into that, that circle. And it was, you know, I can't thank them enough for giving me one, the opportunity and two, just, you know, the realization of, why I love this industry so much and what we can do as, as, you know, as human beings is, and just create something from, you know, an idea 
and then uh, put it on the put it on the screen. Like Marlon was working with me on set, and then after everybody was gone, he'd go and sit on a chair and do green screen to like mimic my actions, but then use his facial expressions because they, you know, put, did green screen of his face on my body. And so, I mean, to do that to, and, and the, the commitment that he showed was was like truly unbelievable. So, um, yeah, it was awesome. That's cool, man. Like, cause that's, a, that's one thing I like to hear, you know, because growing up, like he was my favorite, one of my favorite comedians and still to this day, you know, because he's so animated. Yeah. And so, you know, you always hear like, sometimes like your, your idols aren't really the people you think they are. So it's really cool to hear that, you know, he treated you like really well yeah, and everything no, like is. that. And he's a good person. So he is. Uh, Except he told you, you sucked at Madden. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I've gotten better. I probably still wouldn't beat him. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right, though. Because I, I would sit there and do the same thing with kids that I worked with. I would play them in Madden and stuff, and I would tell them, you know, it's it's encouragement. That's how you get better. <laughs> don't, like, don't let kids win. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. The uh, So a- acting fascinates me. I'm not an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, so I heard numerous times that you actually don't like to be scared. Yeah. And I was really like, how does that work when you're making a horror movie and you don't like to be scared? Does that help you with the character in any way, shape or form? Yeah. I mean, I think when you're doing the scaring, it, it definitely helps. Cause then you know what would really, you know, agitate the other person or whatever it is to really get underneath their skin to scare the shit out of them. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily know. Um, I mean, I've I've done a decent amount of horror, uh, you know, movies, TV shows now, um, so I'm familiar with the genre. Um, and I and I I mean, one thing I gotta say about horror is the fan base is beyond, uh, above and beyond every other fan base that I know. Truly, is like the fan base is, it's unbelievable the amount of support that the fan base has for you know each film and you know the actors and 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 everything so it's i mean that to me was one thing that really stood out to me when i first got into it um but uh no i think you know i personally don't like being scared um i would you know friends would drag me to you know the movie theater to uh i think the ouija movie and when Uh, when when the mouth was being shown uh sewn shut Mm-hmm. And, and then it would like get it would, they would cut it open well i was sitting there with a sweater over my eyes not watching that thing because i was so fucking scared so uh that's kind of that's the kind of thing that uh you know my friends loved dragging me to because they knew i just wasn't a huge fan but now nowadays i can i i, wa- I watch it and i appreciate it that much more because of, i've been in them and whatnot yeah. so. well Speaking of being in them, I don't think many people realize this, but you've actually portrayed not one, but two horror icons. And I could be wrong. Maybe there's more that I don't know about. But I know that um, aside from being Leprechaun, you also were a body double for Chucky. Yes. In Cult of Chucky. In Cult of Chucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so, <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Because, like, we obviously we know your role is Leprechaun, but, like, what did that involve as far as working with Chucky? Uh, basically, you know, just being in the, uh, you know, in the uniform, doing some shadow work when it came to Chucky is what they filmed. Um, don't know if they necessarily used it as well as, you know, running the feet underneath the, the gurney. Um, okay. I was, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I, that, that's what they filmed with me as well. Um, and then I think for like proportion wise, as well as and whatnot was when they had the three different Chucky's. Um, you know, one without an arm, one with the drill, and then the regular Chucky, that kind of thing. So I was doing, so when they were doing the movements, I would change into different ones in order to, you know, m- make it make sense and yeah. do some, I think, some of the stunt stuff for that. Um, if they use that, I don't necessarily know exactly, but that's kind of what I was doing. And that, that I mean, that was a just a, a really cool experience because especially at that time, I still wasn't necessarily like huge into horror or really like pay attention to it too much. So like I knew, obviously everybody knows Chucky, like Chucky's Chucky, right? But um, what was amazing to me and it's something that I'll never forget and it's, it's stuck with me 
is, uh, you know, D Don Mancini was, um, you know, having lunch and whatnot. And usually, you know, they go and sit with, you know, uh, the first ADs, the producers and all that stuff. And they talk about the ne next half of their day and whatnot. Well, Don, Don came to the table that, you know, us actors were sitting at and just sat down and started eating, eating lunch with us. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Sorry if I'm for swearing. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. We, we swear a lot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, what the, what the fuck is going on right now? You know, directors don't necessarily come to the table and, you know, eat with the cast that much. Uh, you know what I mean? Especially at lunch, you know, that's their time to kind of focus on the next half of the day yeah. planning for the future. So, I mean, that's, not, that's something that was just really, really cool to me. And the atmosphere of, of the whole uh, movie was, was kind, of, kind of stood out. I was like, okay, this is, this is really cool. Like, this is yeah. a set I want to be on and continue to work on. Um, and I want that for like the rest of my career. But, you know, it doesn't always happen that way, but yes. Sure. So yeah, yeah, that was cool. Is there any other like horror icons that you would love to portray? And doesn't have to be like, you know, just little characters, like any of them. Yeah, no, um, I don't know, like Friday the 13th thing would kind of be cool as a, you know, a little position kind of around and cool. fucking slicing some shit up. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I mean, and then like, you know, Chainsaw. Two Chainsaw Massacre that would be that would be unreal. Uh, um, I mean, those are just. I, I yeah. want to see you as Freddy, man. Yeah, Freddy would be fun. I want to see you as Freddy. <laughs> Freddy would be fun. Freddy would be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully, we, hopefully we will see that. Yeah, someday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm open to it. Definitely open to it. All right, so. My main question was going to be like before landing the role as Leprechaun, were you a big horror fan? And so, what are some of your favorite films besides Ouija? Because uh, Ouija, because I know you were scared of that. <laughs> um, so that's the thing. Yeah, I didn't necessarily watch too much horror yeah. um, before, like Leprechaun or um, whatnot. I mean, I I was in uh, uh, Channel Zero. Um, Butcher's Block, which was on Sci Fi, which yeah. was a horror show as yep. well. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've um, seen one of the seasons. I don't think I saw Butcher's Block though. That, it, so that that's the one that uh, that I was in, and it was. I mean, it was it was amazing to work on that as well. Like just okay. the horror of that really opened my eyes. That was like the one thing that really opened my eyes to horror and what it can really, what you can really do when it came to it, and that was really cool to see. So. I mean, nothing really after, excuse me, watching that and filming that, nothing really scares me that much anymore. So um, <laughs> let's just put it that way. There you go. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, but no, I, I mean, I, I love every genre, but horror is just something that I don't necessarily get drawn to right off, yeah. right off the block. But I definitely have appreciation for it and what, you know, what goes into it is extremely um, hard because mm -hmm. it's, you know, horror is a, is a tough uh genre to make every um horror fan happy you mm -hmm. know like you know what i mean they're yeah, yeah. gonna nitpick especially yeah. horror genre, they're gonna nitpick each individual kind of thing and be like oh yeah. i didn't like this i didn't like that but then at the same time they appreciate it that much more which is why they do that yeah. so that's what's like i just i just love it when it comes down to the fans and everybody is just it's it's great to see truly yeah josh looks like a horror movie character dude i don't know if you just saw that creepy thing he just did where he leans yeah. back and then he creepily comes oh, forward. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's a character right there uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, and uh, you know people support me dave in the horror community they told me i have a face for podcast yeah there you go you yeah. definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> one of us. One of us. There we go. <laughs> joined in. Great. Yeah. That was uh, awesome. There's always a point in our episodes where uh, we get our guests to start busting Josh's balls. And I'm like, yes, they're part of us now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Leprechaun Returns was a 2018 film. It was directed by Stephen Kostansky. 
Um, it was supposed to be a direct sequel to the original film. So it was like set 25 years later. Um, so I'm going to kind of like have you go back to that moment uh, when you were offered this script. Um, Steven was coming off of the movie The Void, which got some good uh, good press. So I'm assuming that there was probably some uh, some good feelings about this film because of that. But I'm wondering if you had any hesitations knowing that like Warwick Davis had kind of passed on it. And then a couple of years before that, there was also Leprechaun Origins, which was not received well. Um, so I was just kind of curious on like what your thoughts were when you were offered the script. Uh, the thoughts were to go kill this Leprechaun audition <laughs> yeah. and, and kill everybody that, you know, was, uh, that I was uh, going to kill is yeah, basically so what I was thinking. Um, you know, not too much thought went into, you know, who, what, when, where about, about the franchise. Um, mm -hmm. I was just happy it kind of called my name and got, got brought to my attention. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the audition process was, again, like it was, it was a long time. I, I didn't necessarily like the, after auditioning for it, I didn't hear anything for, like there was multiple months that I didn't hear anything for. So I reached out to, you know, my agent and I just said, you know, like, what's going on with this? I thought I did a really good job. Like, you know, I haven't heard anything. And he's like, okay, you know, I'll give it a check, you know, see what's going on. And so they were, I don't know what, what was, what was going on, but it wasn't going, you know, it wasn't moving as fast as, you know, originally planned and which happens with, I mean, every production it's you know what I mean so um then you know another like month down the road you know I got an an email saying hey they want you to do a you know Skype audition um over over you know and they want to see you and they want to be there that, that kind of thing and I was like okay sounds good let's do it so set that up ended up doing it the first time I ended up uh doing the audition in front of them so they were quoting the audition to, um, you know, to watch back and, you know, to make sure and all this stuff. And they recorded themselves the first time instead of me. So I, so then I had to do it. I had to do it again. So, I mean, it's something like something funny like that, that, you know, came about, um, you know, film, like doing it over Skype and whatnot. Um, so that was pretty funny to, to look back on and be like, oh yeah, you remember how you asked me to do it again because you taped yourself? You know, can we send that out to the world so we can see the reaction of what you guys were doing during my uh, little antics and whatnot? But um, no, I haven't seen any of that. I'd love to see it. That'd be pretty cool to see. That would be. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I just wanted to, um, I mean, I obviously knew about the franchise. I knew how, um, you know, the fans loved Warwick Davis and continue to love Warwick Davis, which, I mean, he was the original Leprechaun and he did an unbelievable job at it. I, I didn't want to copy him though. I, I didn't think that that's just not who I am as an actor is to cop, go ahead, go and copy somebody. Um, but I did know, I, I actually watched the first film when I was in South Africa about to film about, I would say like a week before, because I wanted a fresh take of the first film because that's the, you know, the original. Um, yep. And that's what we were going off of. So I, I wanted just a fresh take um, so I could be fresh with it. And so I think by watching it, I definitely picked up on a few things that I just didn't necessarily have in my bag previously, but everything was, was there beforehand um and I, I mean when I was doing the audition I would go and I would I was listening to podcast Irish speaking podcasts in order to try and pick up the accent and do the, do a better accent when I came to it um so like there's certain things like that I, I just I worked really hard for that audition yeah. and so um you know getting it felt great and then it was just once I was there and filming it was just about giving 110 percent every day no matter what so um and I and I based it off of um actually you know Heath Ledger's uh, Joker is what I based it off of I was like okay like I want that kind of menacing kind of personality when it came to it 
um, but also keeping true to the original films of, you know, being quirky and fun and all that stuff, which is what Heath Ledger did as well, kind of thing. So I thought it was, um, you know, the, the reception I got was obviously, you know, not everybody's going to like it, which is fine. And, and, and I appreciate that, you know, everybody, you know, like we said before, has a right to, to their uh, opinions. Um, but a lot of the feedback has been that they've really enjoyed it. So, I mean, to hearing that and, you know, as this, as it is a huge franchise is what's well, awesome. It's, it's great to hear and, and great to see. So really yeah. appreciative of it all for sure. That's really awesome, man. The, uh, I, I was, I was really curious about that because, you know, obviously like, you know, when you, when, let's be honest, no one really wanted another Leprechaun film. Mm -hmm. And then when it came out, it, like, it was like a 50, 50 where I was, some people were like, Oh, no, Warwick Davis isn't in it. I'm not watching it. But then people watched it and they were like, wow, this is really good. So, mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think... I'm really I'm really glad that it worked out, too. Um, I mean, when it was all said and done, what was your, like, feeling when uh, once everything was done and then you had to have that, like, reception from horror fans? Were you nervous about that? I think so. One of the things that happened was uh, it was, like, the first actual day of filming the actual movie because we ended up doing a screen test for the makeup and everything and I think it was like that day they said to me or whatever it was that oh yeah by the way we're shooting the trailer for it right now and I was like wait what we're shooting the trailer like right now like like you know what I mean like today or we're shooting this or I think they gave it to me a few uh, like a day or two in advance but um I was like okay that sounds good like let's let's go all right let's do it you're like it's, it's time to fucking go it's, i was just so i mean being in the process of like it was so that first day was seven hours in the chair putting the makeup on because they wanted to make sure it was perfect um which was which was also a great a great time um but it was the first day of filming the actual movie and the trailer just got released um, or the teaser, um, and and the, one of the producers came and you know pulled me aside. Um, I think it was before we even started, or, or maybe it was at lunch or whatever it was. But he just said, you know, you know, we we chose you for a reason, that kind of thing. And so that that to me just reassured me of like, okay, no, I appreciate. And like the fact that he came up and and you know said that because he didn't need to. Right, yeah. the fact that he did that it just goes to show, like, uh, and I appreciated that because it, that meant the world to me. It, it made me feel that much more comfortable just going out, out there and just being able to do my thing. So, um, that's another thing I'll, I'll never forget. And, and you know, it's, I mean, overall, it was, it was a hard, it was a hard process, hard, hard on my body for sure. I mm -hmm. mean, I wasn't necessarily like the first week of filming, I didn't eat, I wasn't eating, I was only having smoothies. Okay. So like, I wasn't getting that, I don't think I was getting that proper, you know, protein or nutrition yeah. that I necessarily would have been. Um, I think when I got back from filming and everything like that, I, I lost probably about like five to, you know, eight pounds, which for a little person is a decent amount, decent mm -hmm. amount of weight. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, it, was, it, was a, it was a tough process, but I wouldn't change it for the world either. So um yeah it was it was just it was a ton of fun and i just wish we can uh, do it again one day i i was wanting to say that i really do hope you guys do a sequel to that one i'd love to i'd love to do another one yeah but that was the thing like josh was saying you know um i think like the backlash like because when we first heard that this film was coming out it was like labeled as like sci-fi network film you know and so i think when a lot of fans kind of hear like oh, that's a sci-fi movie. Like, that's automatically going to be, like, a bad movie. They didn't put a lot of work into it. And I remember, because my kids are big fans of the Leprechaun series. Mm -hmm. And then, so Dave ended up seeing it before me, and he was like, dude, it was actually good. And then so I was like, all right, we'll check it out. And my kids loved it. And yeah. like you said, you like, you know, you, you put so much time into it 
being quirky and doing your own thing you know i remember one line like one of the kills when you had the hammer and you go it's hammer time and i'm like, yeah, same, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so my kids my man you should see my daughter like she'll sit there and it's hammer time and she'll do it you oh, know it's, she loves it you know what i mean and so that's like scream is like her favorite franchise and then leprechauns are second cool and, and we she, went when we went to the convention, they were both wearing leprechaun shirts. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Dude, yeah, they, they, they loved the job that you did. So I told her, I'm like, I'm interviewing the guy that was in this movie. She goes, no way. So she was all happy. So keep doing a good job, man. <laughs> like, if they want to say hi, I don't know. I'd be more than happy to say hi to them if they're there. Uh, they're not here today. So I'll, I'll, I'll let them mess. I'll message you. For sure. For sure. All awesome. right. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm glad it all worked out because now you're on the PVD Horror Podcast and it doesn't get any better than that, right? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Stop. You can call you can call me out on that bullshit anytime. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? This has been a great time. Are you kidding me? Hey. I'll take it. Hey. I'll take it. You know what? Uh, you busted my balls, so it's all good. You're well, <laughs> welcome to the club now. Um, there was a scene in that movie. One of the kills, like he was talking about hammer time. One of the other one was like, it was like you were being born. You come, you came out of the guy, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah. It was, it was uh, uh, Mark yeah. Holton, right? Yeah, yeah Ozzy. I mean, it was awesome that they got like Ozzy from the original film to come and play yeah. that, that part. Uh, Mark Holton, and he was awesome to to work with as well. He was, it was just a, a bunch of laughs and a great time. Um, uh, yeah, that was a that was the first day of filming. That was the first day of filming that we filmed that. And the process of that was just like an eye-opening experience of a, like, holy shit, this is what we're doing. Okay, let's get going. Like nothing, you know, it was, was no like lead up to, uh, you know, the goal aspect of the whole thing. It was like, okay, let's just boop, literally yeah. drop it here and just, you know, <laughs> burst out of it like I did. Um, but uh, no, that was... It was, it was a super fun day. I mean, I remember, like, they would, they dug a hole into the ground so I could literally be in there. They kind of, they, they really wanted me to be, like, super deep in there to, like, actually kind of, like, pop out of the stomach, but it wasn't deep enough. So that, and I, I it wasn't actually, no, it wasn't that it wasn't deep enough. It's that I, I couldn't get, like, small, like, tight enough in order to do that. So it, we just had to kind of do the whole, like, pan up kind of thing and it and it worked it worked yeah. but um yeah no it was, it was a really really fun day yeah there's, a, awesome. there's a lot of scenes like that that like i to be honest with you, you know i know brandon was talking about how sci-fi like when we first would hear that like this is a sci-fi movie you kind of yeah. groan and you're like uh I, I i'm gonna be honest with you i feel like leprechaun returns changed that for sci-fi yeah. because since then now like when a movie is released on sci-fi, like they just did the Slumber Party Massacre. Mm -hmm. Like we all kind of like, we're skeptical, but we're like, we're going to give it a shot now. Like oh, before, before yeah. Leprechaun Returns, I wouldn't have given a lot of movies a shot. Like those are Josh's movies. Those aren't my movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now I'm like, I'm more open to it. So sweet. That's you know, great. That's great. I too. think that's cool. I appreciate right. that. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, I know you alluded to something in the beginning about a project you, that you're writing. Um, so I just wanted to ask, like, what's next for you? Is there anything that you want people to be on the lookout for or to check out currently? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, no, I'm just writing this, uh, this short right now. Um, the name uh, is up in the air still. It's not, uh, it's not a certain name yet. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's basically just a story about, um, you know, life in the industry as a little person. Um, and to kind of open up, you know, the eyes of, of people to see what it, uh, you know, what uh, me especially have, have, has gone to. Um, so, yeah, there's that. I, I'm planning on doing, um, and I, I really want to do a bunch more uh, conventions, um, especially around, you know, the States and, you know, around the world, hopefully uh, in the future. Um, this COVID thing might, you know, put a damper into that until it, I can actually, you know, come and go as I please because you know the last thing I want right. to do is, is get you know stuck down there and then be, yeah. be there for 14 days in a room you know thinking about oh that wall has a dent in it 
So does that one. Yep. Oh, wait. And that one too. <laughs> On the roof? Yep. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So uh, that's my that's my plan for the future because I, I I truly love giving back to the fans. That's something that I that I really brings joy to me when I when I go to these conventions. So um, I want to do that. Um, uh, if you've seen Nightmare Alley, um, I was in the second last scene of that, um, and so uh, got to spend the day with uh, uh, Del Toro and. Bradley Cooper and and you know the actors on that and that's so, so cool that was uh that was a really int- cool and, and fun experience to kind of sit back and just watch these unbelievable people um in in this world of the industry and yeah. do what they do so that was really awesome um yeah there is a uh there is something that is coming up that I can't say just yet but it's something that doesn't necessarily happen for um, little people often. So um, just to be aware of, of that. Um, uh, and as soon as I can, I will, you know, let the world know. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. Will you let PVD Horror know first? <laughs> <laughs> I will I will let the world know. Ah, oh, come on. That's a no. No. <laughs> is it because Josh we can tell Josh to get out of the group and you can no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Josh, I know he's got shifty eyes I don't trust Josh, him either I, you know you gotta shave the, the beard if you, you know, I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would never ask that of you to do that because I would be I would I wouldn't like myself anymore if I asked you to do that you know what that's that's pretty awesome like that speaks volumes because uh, a lot of people just want to inflict their will on everybody else and doesn't your wife ask you to shave it every day <laughs> well, <a> yeah. <laughs> so like i said cool people don't tell me what to do <laughs> <laughs> i have enough of it at home yeah, that's right oh <laughs> uh, yeah Lyndon, uh can you tell everyone where to find you on social media yeah um uh on facebook it's the real Lyndon porco on instagram it's Lyndon porco on twitter it's Lyndon porco um tiktok it's also Lyndon porco um <laughs> Lyndon porco there you go yeah just my name basically okay. uh yeah that's where you can find me awesome nice man Lyndon, thank you so much man this has been amazing thank you thank you for having me appreciate it of course so for everybody listening um we are actually you know i want to mention something before we wrap up the last few episodes we did there's been like these weird coincidence like tie-ins and this episode, we on today when we're recording this, we announced that we're doing um, a movie night at a local brewery. We're going to be showing Leprechaun Three there, so it's kind of funny that we're talking cool. Leprechaun. And we just made this announcement: we do movie nights at Buttonwoods Brewery um, in Rhode Island, and we do like um, we donation collections and stuff like that. So it's, it's usually a good time. Um, yeah. But another thing that kind of is a coincidence today: it's actually Warwick Davis's birthday today. Um, so we were kind of talking about how you were able to take the honor of playing the leprechaun role. And, um, it's funny that it's also his birthday today. So just wanted to mention that, not that. Cool. Any that, you know, that is very cool. That is very cool. <laughs> yeah. well, but, um, so everybody, really thank you cool. for listening and, uh, we're going to take off, but we appreciate it. And, uh, Lyndon, thank you again. And hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Be easy. Thanks, man. Thank you.